Good afternoon, everyone. I'm here today to talk about a very important topic that does not take the attention it deserves. Do you know what this is? You probably have eaten it today already. This is budding yeast, and it's my favorite model organism. I use it in the lab every day. Yeast research is a great fit for African institutes, as it's much more cost efficient than cell culture and animal work. Yet, very few African labs implement yeast research. Budding yeast shares 23% homology to humans. It was the first eukaryote to be sequenced in 1996, and it has been used as a model since the 1960s. Yeast research has resulted in many groundbreaking discoveries, several of which deserve a Nobel Prize. After finishing my PhD in Germany, I came back to Egypt as a postdoc at Center for Genomics at Zuel City of Science and Technology to establish the use of yeast as a model. Since then, we have been using yeast to reveal new gene functions in various molecular mechanisms. These mechanisms are associated with a number of diseases, including cancer and neurodegenerative disorders. Our research aims to contribute to the advances of biomedical research in Africa and worldwide through understanding of diseases and tailoring personalized medicine. Another aspect of research that I really care about is working in a collaborative research environment. We are asking the future generations to make a great impact on humanity through scientific research. That means teaching them the importance of collaboration and the positive attitude required to enrich humanity and African values as much as practice scientific excellence. Our African institutes host researchers of great potential, but we need mentors and role models to guide them to transform Africa from a consumer of research and technology to a producer capable of competing. Despite the numerous duties of being a faculty member, I am committed to spending time with my students and transferring my knowledge to them, making them feel comfortable in their lab environment, teaching them how to work in teams. I also teach them the importance of data reproducibility and studying to acquire knowledge and not just to perform well in exams. I also deeply believe it's time to broaden our definition of what makes a good role model for a woman scientist. It's more than applauding women who succeed in African science today. It's about reframing how we talk about women's competence. Nurturing women role models in science requires shifting common mentalities and destroying limiting stereotypes of the perfect mom and wife. The work-life balance requires some delegation, offering additional support for women researchers during their maternity time and while raising their kids up is vital to their academic journey. I was very fortunate that my social circle embraces that I asked for help and hired someone to take care of my kid during the working hours. There was no shame in this. In fact, I was even better able to spend time with my kid after work. My husband, parents and friends are role models for supporting me this way. And I think all women researchers deserve the same chance. Everyone listening now has the potential to be the kind of model that can bring great science home to Africa. We have to all cooperate, love the good for all, and seek success together rather than individual victories. By changing our culture, by adapting teamwork, and appreciating healthy work and lab environment, we can achieve Africa's full potential to advancing science and technology.